May chains of bondage be broken today. In Jesus' name. There were some men and women, some families that came in dragging a chain and ball behind them. It's got you bound. But I've come to tell you, Jesus has come to set you free. He has the lock. He has the key to the lock that holds you in bondage. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated here this, after, this morning. Glory to God. Lord, have your way here today. Lord, move here in a mighty way. Lord, I feel so insufficient. As I stand here this morning to deliver this word, God, that you have pressed into my spirit. I'm asking, Lord, today, let your anointing rest upon us. May the Spirit of God move here this morning. Oh, let your anointing rest upon me, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Move in us. Let fresh winds blow today. Let chains of bondage be broken. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church said amen. Amen. Thank you. I want, if you would, this morning to turn with me, and I won't hold you much longer. To the book of Galatians in chapter 1 and verses 6 and 8. This week, God has really stirred this into my spirit. And Lord, I need your help today. Paul writes to the, Corinth, to the Galatians here. And there's an issue that's going on. And there's something that's happening. There's something that is taking place. And it is really going, if allowed, will really affect the people here. And it will bring them back into a place of bondage. There's some things that are happening here. And he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into this, into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. It makes mention here that something has happened, something has crept in. And when you look at this, he makes mention of the word pervert. The word pervert means to change, to alter, or to distort. In other words, move it from its original meaning or its original context. So when you first read this, if just by glimpse, there appears to be that there's something happening here. But Paul also makes mention as we get later on down in the end of verse 8 that he says here, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be banned. Let him be excommunicated. And I want to say this this morning, just a little dash 11 seems to leaven the whole lump. And when something creeps in here, Paul has identified it. And I want to say this as I get started. Just bear with me just a few minutes. As we would most, when we briefly read this, we see that something has happened here in this church. There's somebody that has crept in. There is some kind of teaching that is starting to move its way into the church of Galatia where Paul was on his missionary, had been on a missionary journey and planted this church. But we see where something else has happened. A group of people or maybe an individual has come in. We identify that we would say that there's some false teaching that is taking place here. And at the first thing that we would think of, maybe we would think if there's a false prophet in the house, that he would be preaching something that we would be very aware of. 
Maybe some new doctrine. Maybe some new something. And a lot of times if that is the case, you can identify it real quickly. If someone come today and would stand here and preach some old fable tale or some old off-the-wall mess, it wouldn't take you long to identify, hey, this guy is not right. If someone come in and stood in this platform and began to preach that Jesus is not the only way, you would quickly identify it. You would quickly be alert to it. If a pastor or a prophet came in and began to declare this, that there's more than one way, the majority of the congregation, I would hope, would get up and walk out. But I want to say this this morning. The devil works in the very deceptive ways. And he always brings in something that you're familiar with. And the thing that was taking place here in this ministry is where the gospel had been perverted was not some, something new. And it was not even trying to discredit the work of Jesus. It was just wanting to add to this work of Christ. And the, the, the people here at Galatian were standing up and beginning to declare that salvation is not just through Jesus Christ, but that you also must be circumcised to be saved. And I want to say this this morning. Anytime that you find yourself, this is not the first episode that this has taken place because we find out in the book of Acts in chapter 15, there was a group of people that rose up and began to declare, unless you be circumcised, you cannot be saved. In other words, there was an adding to it. Just adding very discreetly. They was very familiar with this act. They was very familiar with it because for the most part, it would identify them as the seed of Abraham. Just simply being circumcised. But what they had missed the point of is that that did not necessarily identify them with Abraham. It was faith that had identified them with Abraham. Because you could be circumcised in the flesh, but not of the heart. So at any time they was pushing them, that there's something that you must do to bring about this salvation. And they began to press upon them this, and I want to share with you this, for you to add anything to the work of Jesus Christ in order to be saved is to pervert the purity of the gospel. I want to make this loud and clear this morning because I have been caught up in some of this. I have been around people that's caught up in this. I have seen where people made profession of faith, hey, I want to give my life to Christ. And I have a scene before they could ever get out of the door. If this gets on your toes, just say, oh my. But before they could get out the doors of the church, the legalistic group of the ministry had hemmed them up and said, I know that what you've done today was a good deal. But if you really want to be saved, let me give you a list of the things that you must do. All that is is legalism trying to bring you back up under bondage. Because at the end of the day, the only way that you can ever be set free is going to be by faith in Jesus and Him alone. Let me shout this one more time. Your freedom, your deliverance, your victory, your salvation, your healing is going to come through Jesus and Him alone. And to add anything to that, you have perverted the purity and the simplicity of the gospel. Can I share this with you this morning? The blood of Jesus is powerful enough without your help. I stand here this morning that the gospel is enough. To add anything to the gospel would be heresy. Anytime when you start to say, hey, let me do this. Maybe this will help me. By perverting the gospel, by the perverting of the gospel, its power is lost. My, my. This is why the churches today have reverted, to, have, have reverted over to entertainment. 
to other sources. Because we somehow or another, we sit around, we can't understand why there's no power. Yet I do understand it. Because when not only is our faith in Christ, our faith is also in the power and the work of man. And we have substituted faith for just the strength of man and man alone. I want to tell you, the church has to come back to a place. And the individual, if you want to experience victory, your faith must be solely placed in Christ and Him alone and no one else. Grab a hold of this church. My freedom is in Him. Let me share this with you. Anything, anytime that you add something to the gospel, you are diluting the gospel. You are weakening it. Where I'm from, anytime you add something to another drink or any sort of, pour some water in it, you dilute it. And that's the same thing that happens when you add something to the gospel, you dilute it. Y'all with me just a few more minutes. I want to just share this thought with you. And I want to share a little bit of my testimony. I've been saved for some time. But I found myself, when I got saved, God doing a mighty work in my life. I mean, God had stirred me up. I was the guy that when worship service starts, and I try to still be that guy. Listen, somebody needs to tie him down, stir it up, because I had realized that God had set me free from what I could not set myself free from. God had delivered me from what I could not deliver my own self from. But it wasn't long after this. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm hanging around new groups of people, different groups of people that I grew up with preaching in all different kind of churches. And I found that it wasn't long after that, I found myself living under constant condemnation to some of, some of man-made legalism laws. They would begin to tell me, you've got to do this. And I found myself trying in my flesh to attain the favor of God. Anybody ever been there? Let me make it plain with you. They would begin to tell me, Brother Stacy, and I had this mindset, if I fast three times a week, maybe God would do this in my life. And so now I find myself fasting three times a week, and when I couldn't make it the third day, I find myself lower into bondage, lower into guilt. I'm not against fasting and praying. It's a part of my daily life. But any time when you begin to revert to a means to trying to gain favor from God besides Jesus Christ and Him alone, you have done found yourself in error. I found out that people was trying to get me. You got to do this to attain God's favor. You must do that to attain God's favor. I wanted to ask him, how far do I need to run? How many push-ups do I need to do? What all do I need to do to attain the favor of God? Because you put so many rules and regulations on my life. My life now, I begin to live in depression, condemnation, discouragement, and misery. I don't know, maybe none of y'all have ever been there. All I could ever hear preachers in, in the back of my mind, whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. And about having the joy of the Lord. But my joy had gone. My freedom had gone. I found myself in the chains of bondage again. Trying to attain the favor of God. Some of you here this morning thinking you can attain the favor of God by the things that you're doing, by the clothes that you're wearing, by the length of your hair. Your favor is attained by the cross of Calvary and what Jesus Christ has done there. My, there's nothing in me. And I found out here, I woke up one morning after a couple months Anybody ever been there? Maybe my last Sunday preaching here, I don't know. <laughs> I just carried home with you. I found myself, I get it up, just depressed, just discouraged. And I hear this today. 
I hear it from many people. You will hear it from um, several people. And I do want to explain, I just can't live this life. I just can't live it. And I begin to get up in the mornings, I can't live this life. I can't live it. Lord, I thought that serving you was supposed to be good. I thought that serving you was supposed to bring joy. I thought that serving you was supposed to set me free. But why have I found myself back into bondage? I get up one morning. Y'all still with me? And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really debating this. This is no fun no more. I had a person tell me I was trying to live to the expectation of legalism. I will never forget this. One of the guys, one of them, a man came and listened to me preach one Sunday. A man that I knew didn't have, didn't have nothing bad to say. He was going there, but I met him on the street the next week. Some of you might condemn me for this, but it'll be all right. I'm used to it. He saw me the next week. I had on my short britches and my tennis shoes and an old T-shirt. And this is what the rumor got out on the street. That preacher at that church ain't even saved. And that came upon me. And I thought to myself, my Lord, what have, what have I got to do to be saved? Is anybody with me? What have I got to do? And see, now I can identify when somebody looks at me and tells me, I'm struggling with living this life. What you mean? I'm struggling with trying to keep all this and do all this and all the rules and regulations they put upon me. That morning I walked to the mirror and I looked at it, just talking to myself. <laughs> Y'all don't ever do that, do you? <laughs> looking at the mirror, talking to myself. And as I'm sitting there looking at that mirror, I'm just talking. I said, Lord, if following you and serving you is supposed to be so much fun, and if I'm supposed to have so much joy, and if I'm supposed to be free, why am I still in bondage? I've never heard an audible voice of the Lord, and that day it did not happen. But there was something that spoke to me. He spoke to me that day that I will never forget. He says, where you're at today is because your fault. He said, because I've come to set you free. And your faith needs to be moved from other things and place them into me and to me only. And it was there that day that I began to experience freedom. I began to experience what it meant to be free. And Paul deals with this issue. So many times in good intentions, we have diluted the gospel because of the things that we want to add to it. The things that we want to, man, somehow or another always wants to try, can I get a part of my salvation? I want to claim some of this. But I want to tell you that salvation is in Jesus and Him alone. The power of God is in Jesus and Him alone. Deliverance is in Jesus and Him alone. My victory over sin is in Jesus and Him alone. My victory over the flesh is in Jesus and Him alone. My victory over the world is in Jesus and Him alone. My victory over Satan is in Jesus and Him alone. I come to declare whom the sun sets forth free is free indeed stop diluting the gospel you wonder why i'm staying in bondage i'm going to tell you place your faith in christ and him alone this is what paul seen the danger of he said that this stuff gets inside of the church he said the people are going to go right back into bondage jesus don't need no help he can do it all by himself i said he's the one who holds the keys to the lock my 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 
We talk about faith in Christ. A lot of times our faith is just added to some other works that we brought in. I'm talking about faith in Christ and Him alone. You want to see the power of God work in a church? When the church comes comes to a place our faith is in him in him alone you want to see the power of God work in your life so come back to a place my faith is in Christ in him in him alone can y'all wait me a few more minutes my when you look there's a story in in uh, the book of first uh, Samuel King David and Goliath now remember that David's testimony was, God had delivered me. Let me go back to this. Hang on, you ain't with me. God had delivered me from the hand of the lion. God had delivered me from the jaws of the bear. Oh, he begins to tell this story about God, how God was a deliverer, how God had given him the victory, how God had done these things in his life. It encouraged the people so much, they was all stirred up. Even Saul had got stirred up from the testimony of David, and he says, hey, get this man ready for battle. You see this? For all these years, David never had nothing but God. God had brought him through the the mouth of a lion delivered him from the mouth of the lion, from the claw of the bear. And all of a sudden, he's fixing to fight the biggest battle of his life. They look at the size of the battle. They look at the size of the giant. And for some reason or another, Saul determines that God's not going to be enough. You're going to need some armor. My, my, my. Is anybody with me? God, God ain't enough. You just a little bitty boy. God can't you you you're 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 weak. You're helpless in front of this giant. You're gonna need some help. So what did he say? Go get this man some armor. Just somehow or another, the power of the flesh wants to step in and says, You're gonna need some help with this. David. Saul knew nothing about what was going on here spiritually. And I thank God that David says, I don't need none of that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My deliverance is not in armor. It's not in these things. My deliverance is in God and Him alone. He has brought me out and He will carry me in. So Paul stresses Faith in Christ. Faith in Jesus. You want to stir up legalism? Just begin to denounce all the other things we have tried to add to it. And they say, hey, Jesus can't do it alone by himself. He's going to need your help. And I say this, I've tried it by myself. And I can't do it. I need his help. How did the Spirit of God came in, come into your life? Did it come by works? Somebody answer it. Did it come by works? No. It came by grace through faith. So why would you now change the plan? Why would you do this? Some people, I was in a conversation with a pastor and I began to tell him, I said, you need to preach Christ and him alone. He says, Pastor, we need to put a little bit of rules in there. He said, we don't put rules in there. He said, the people would just get unstrained. They'll run around like wild cattle. I said, I want to tell you something. He says, I know what you're saying is true. He says, but if you don't put guidelines and you don't stress this, he says, they just begin, you, you got to put some guidelines and you got to put some things on them. I says, let me tell you this. If a man believes that he can go unbridled through faith in Christ Jesus, he needs to be saved. Is anybody with me? I said, because you don't understand what salvation is. Because I tried to do all these things and I couldn't bridle my own self. 
But when through faith in Jesus, am I in the right house? Through faith in Jesus Christ, what came through faith in Christ? The Holy Spirit. We're talking about saving faith. When faith in Jesus Christ, when I place my faith in Christ, you know what showed up in my life? The Holy Spirit. Oh, and when he comes, he comes with power. I didn't have victory over flesh. I didn't have victory over the world. I didn't have victory over the devil. But when the Spirit came into my life, oh, my, my, my. It was when I placed my faith solely in the work of Christ, I found the Holy Ghost doing some stuff in my life that I had never experienced before. I found out then, Lord, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I found myself then doing what was contained in the law. Oh, I didn't have to do it. God just doing something inside of my life. I was talking to another preacher friend this this week. I told him, I said, there was a time in my life I woke up every morning. Lord, maybe I'll make something plain here. Every morning I woke up. Lord, I've got to do this today. I've got to do that. I said, I just found myself living in misery. I said, but the day that I got up, I said, I'm going to focus on Christ. My, my. Is anybody with me? I'm going to focus on him. I'm going to place my faith on him. I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to dwell on him. That was then I found myself doing. I'm not saved by works, but through my salvation, my life is producing works because of the Holy Spirit working in my life. Does this make sense? This is what the power of God is doing, and all he is asking you to do is place your faith solely in me. Man, victory in Jesus. I see so many times We get up, we leave out. The devil just really is having a heyday in our life. I'm going to be, I'm going to close, just hang on. Lord, use me here. I found myself when I began to just solely place my faith in Christ. In him alone. I found out that some things started to change. Amen. I found out some things started to change. I found out the things that I was struggling trying to do. All of a sudden, I'm doing them. Oh, ain't nobody with me. See, I can't make you love your brother. You may try to put on a mask and show up, but nobody can make you love your neighbor or your brother. You can come in. You can have your little mask on and covered up. You can say all the right things, but nobody can make you love your brother. But I want to tell you there's one. When he begins to work in your life, how does this happen, Pastor? How does this take place? When your faith is placed solely in, the cro- in Jesus Christ and his work at the cross, you're going to find out, man, the Holy Spirit is working in my life. The Holy Spirit is doing something. I used to not like that guy down the road. As a matter of fact, I used to really dislike him. And if I can use some strong words, I used to hate him. But I found out that when the Holy, when my faith is in placed in Christ, that the Holy Spirit is working inside of me, I found myself going by and seeing him. Amen. Is anybody with me? Pastor, did you try that? No, it was just something inside of me that's changing me. Does this make sense? It's just changing me from the inside out. It's the Spirit of God working and abiding in my life. How did it happen? Through faith in Christ and Him alone. This is the power of the gospel, the power to set free, the power to make whole, and the power to deliver. Man, Lord help me here. When Abraham, I'm going to just give you something to think on. How was Abraham justified? Was he justified through circumcision? I'm going to give you something else to think about. Was Abraham justified through the keeping of the law? Yeah. 
You know what he was justified by? Faith. So why do we want to change the solution to the sin problem? I'm telling you today, church, the cure to sin is Jesus and him alone. You're going to meet someone on the street. You're going to meet someone on the street tomorrow. The majority of the church people, when someone come up and ask, man, I, I'm under all kind of chains of bondage. What do I need to do? They're going to, the church people, the, the people are going to tell you, well, you need to show up for church. That'd be a good start. That ain't, I ain't denying that that won't be a good start, but that's not freedom. And, and listen, if we can get you into a program, we can get you, get you into a good Bible study. That's a good start, but that's not the solution. Is anybody with me? And maybe we can get you enrolled in AA. And maybe you can get delivered this way. This is all kind of stuff we come up with. And instead of just telling them, I want to tell you simply, the cure for your issue is Jesus Christ and him alone. The blood that has been shed. I can yet to understand how the church can sing about the blood, shout about the blood, but don't believe it's the only cure for the sin problem that I have, that you have, and this world has. It's Jesus and Him alone. And my victory is in Him. Your victory is in Him. I want you to stand your feet this morning. Lord, help me today. I come in here this morning, and all I can see this week is people's lives that are in bondage. Man-made legalism. Trying to attain the favor in another method. Trying to think that my healing... And my deliverance was some other way, some other route. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when you place your faith. I think one of the biggest issues that we have here is defining faith. Faith is not a confession of just saying something. We've tried to convince people if you'll just say this, you'll be set free. If you'll just name and claim it. You can have it. Just, just say it. Just say it. You can't say what you believe. You can say it, but, but you can't mean it. Anybody with me? I hope I'm making this plain because confession is not faith and faith is not dead. It's alive. It's doing something inside of you. Faith is committing, embracing. Amen. Amen. Faith is saying, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Is anybody with me? I'm not perfect. I'm not declaring to be. I, I, make, fault, I'm, I, I make some falls and failures. But you know what? I know the solution. I know the cure. I know the way. Amen. And my victory is in Jesus and him alone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you.